Hi there. Now for this question, we're told that an online shop then sells a computer game at an average rate of one per day. And in an attempt to increase sales of the computer game, the price is reduced for six months. A random sample of 28 days is taken from these six months. And in the sample of 28 days, 36 computer games are sold. Using a suitable approximation and a 5% level of significance, test whether or not the average rate of sales per day has increased during these six months. State your hypothesis clearly. And this is for seven marks. So if you'd like to have a go at this one, just give you a moment to pause the video. And when you come back, you can check your work solution against mine. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. Well, first of all, what I want to do is set up our random variable, okay? I'm gonna call it X, so I'm just going to say here, let X be the random variable. I have RV for short, the random variable. And in this example, it'll be the number of sales. Okay, number of sales. Now X will follow a Poisson distribution. So I'm just going to say here where X is distributed as a Poisson distribution with a mean of lambda. Now we've got to state our hypothesis clearly here. And so what I'm going to have for my null hypothesis as if nothing has changed, we're going to have that the mean, because it's one per day, we're looking at 28 days, we'd expect to have a mean number of sales of 28. So the null hypothesis, lambda, is going to be equal to 28. But we're told that 36 computer games are sold. And because this is more than our mean, then we're wanting to test to see whether or not the number of cells has increased. In other words, the alternative hypothesis then is that the mean has increased. So it's greater than 28. So we've stated our hypothesis clearly here. And we're testing at the 5% level. So I'm going to put alpha equals 5% here. And we've also got an observed value which is 36, which we'll be testing with. Now when I'm doing hypothesis testing, if you watched my earlier videos, quite often you'll see that I like drawing a kind of number line here. And we've got a mean of 28. If the null hypothesis was true, then I would be expecting generally 28 sales. I'm not gonna get exactly 28 sales, every um, month but let's just suppose that it's going to vary it's going to vary somewhere around those 28. we've got 36 sales and the question is is that 36 a value which is just generally expected or is it in what we call the rejection region where I would reject the null hypothesis, okay? So I'm just gonna write that in there. And there's two ways that we can approach this type of problem. And that is that we can either work out what the probability is of getting more than 36, and if that is less than 5%, then we would reject the null hypothesis. The other way is to work out what the critical value would be. Where would be the number, what would be the number of sales if we had to reject HO? So if we're doing the critical value method, I'm going to call this value here where we reject the null hypothesis R. So that means that we're going to reject the null hypothesis if the probability that x is greater than or equal to that critical value r 
given that the null hypothesis is true, turns out to be less than 0 0.05, 5% in other words. And when we're doing this, okay, we're going to need to work out the probability then of x being greater than or equal to r. But we've got to use a suitable approximation. And we should be familiar with the idea that if lambda is, that's the mean, is a large value, I'm just going to put here since lambda is a large value, it is, say, greater than 20. It's 28 in this example, although I've seen this come down to as much as 15. It varies from one textbook to the other, I notice. But uh, if it's a large value, then we can say that that discrete random variable given by x following a Poisson distribution is approximately the same as another random variable y following a normal distribution. And if that's the case, it will have a mean of lambda, okay, and a variance of lambda. And for our distribution here, Assuming that the null hypothesis is true, I'll just write under the null hypothesis, we would have that y would be distributed as a normal distribution with mean 28 and the variance would be 28. So when it comes to working with normal distribution, we've got to be very careful because we're dealing with a discrete random variable, approximating it to a continuous distribution. We've got to be careful because we need to be aware of continuity corrections. When we're doing the normal approximation and we're using the normal distribution curve for y, let's just draw it in. Okay, say something like this maybe. We've got our mean of 28, okay, there. And instead of being greater than or equal to r, say, here, it actually isn't r, okay? I'll be changing this in a moment. This continuity correction is that when we're working out this area to the right of r, we're thinking about discrete random variables, r, and filling these values, these discrete values, in with spaces. Spaces of unit width. Fill them in with boxes. If you're not sure about this idea of continuity corrections, do check it out on my website. But essentially, the discrete random variable before this would have been r minus 1. The one to the right of it would have been r plus 2. And uh, we're looking for the area to the right, but we've got to include R. And that means we've got to come right up to the edge of this box here. And that value there is R minus 0.5. Because the width of these boxes is one unit. So you've got to drop back half a unit there. So when we're working out this probability, we've got to be careful with the continuity correction, it's r minus 0.5. So I hope you can see that there. Now when it comes to standardizing this, okay, if we just draw up our standardized curve, let's put z there, and remember it's got a mean of 0. If we were to project this value down to here, then we're looking for a z value here that gives us a probability of being 5% more than it. Okay, we just put 5% there, corresponding with 0.05. And from tables, you should be able to work out what that z value is. The z value is 1.6449. Now we know that z always connects the observed value through this formula. That is the z value, in, our, in this case it's 1.6449, okay, is equal to the observed value, which is r minus 0.5, and then we subtract 
the mean, 28, and we divide this by the standard deviation, which will be square root of 28. Now, we need to rearrange this for r. So I can see that if I multiply both sides by root 28 and add 28.5, I'm going to therefore have r equals 28.5 plus 1.6449 multiplied by the square root of 28. And working this out, we end up with r equaling 37.20 and so on. Now when I compare the observed value of 36 to our critical value of 37.20 here, I can see 36 is to the left of it. So it's not in the reject the null hypothesis region. So it's not significant. So I'm just going to put here that since 36, our observed value, is less than the critical value, the conclusion I draw is that it's not significant, that we accept the null hypothesis, and that there is evidence to suggest that the rate of increase of sales has not increased. So that's the critical method of going about this particular significance test. The other way is just by working out the probability of being greater than or equal to 36 and testing to see whether that is less than 0.05. If you haven't seen that video and want to see that method, do go on my website and you'll see it.